Hello, how's it going? In the previous video, we made the jump from 3D to 2D, doing some post-processing. Now I want to take this a step further and I want to overlay a texture over our view of the world. Eventually this could be some sort of heads up display or something. We're just going to have a go at this. So let's get into it. I'm just going to open up a text editor and there's going to be a few stages to this. First up, we're going to need to define a sort of screen shader for essentially blitting a texture onto the screen. And then we're going to have some sort of screen pipeline, which will be in charge of drawing our HUD. Then we're going to need some sort of HUD material constructed, which we're, that'll, that'll be a texture. That'll be the thing that will draw over our view. And then we'll have some sort of setup where we draw the world, then the HUD on top of that. And then finally, we're going to enable alpha blending in the pipeline, if I can spell. So these are the steps and let's get in and do it. Okay, so to start with our screen shader. Now this screen shader is gonna be really pretty similar to the post processing shader that we've already created. We're just going to do even less actually. Um, so we're not gonna apply any post processing effect. We're just gonna take in a texture and read the exact texture value back. So let's grab everything that I've got in my post shader. And then as a refresher, what we're doing is we're dispatching a message to say, hey, um, execute this shader six times. And on each of those executions, we're grabbing a position. This is normalized device coordinates, you know, in screen space. We pass that along, along with the texture coordinate. Then in the post-processing shader, all we need to do is take the texture which has been bound in the bind group and put that on the screen. So it's almost like an identity operation. We just do this sample from the given texture at the given texture coordinate. And there it is. We've got it too easy. So screen shader we can say is done. The next thing I'm going to need to do is get in and make a screen pipeline. So what you may notice, and this is just on me because I just opened this freshly. Um, but if I go to model, oh, if I go somewhere like renderer, I've got a bunch of errors. I need to just quickly spin up my stuff. I need to download my dependencies. Could I have done this before recording the video? Absolutely, but I didn't. So I'll just go to my definitions file and I'll define, I'll call this HUD, just like that in my definitions for my pipeline types. And then I'll go back to my renderer and my renderer will now have a bunch of errors because I need to go back and specify and give it some starting values for the pipelines, layouts, bind groups, all of that. Cool. So I'll go and construct the pipeline. Now in the previous video, I constructed a bind group layout for the uh, post-processing shader, even though it wasn't strictly necessary. I'm actually not going to do that this time. I'm just going to, just for variety, just going to work with things as they are. So I'm still going to construct this before adding the depth stencil state, because why not? All I need to do is add that material uh, group layout that I've got for everything else. And that's fine. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add the, I think it's screen, I should probably call that screen shader. There we go. Okay, just for readability, because I'm pretty sure 
the name screen is going to get reused a bunch of times. Okay, so we've got screen shader. We then add that source code and just double checking it's VS main and FS main. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Cool. So format, color format, that's fine. Uh, pipelines. HUD. And the purpose of this label is if things crash, then inside the console, inside the inspector, I can see specifically which pipeline crashed the program. But yeah, that's looking good. Double checking myself a little bit today. I should just push through and do it, right? Okay, so let's say the screen pipeline is done. That is very interesting. <laughs> Okay, no errors at least. Okay, so what has gone on? <clears throat> it looks like I've added the wrong... Oh yeah, I've messed these up. So for the post shader, let's go get that around the other way. Screen shader, that's fine. And then... Sometimes I wonder how much fun these videos are to watch. It's me sort of bumbling around with this stuff, but yep, okay, that's fine. That's looking good. Okay, HUD materials. So what I've also got in this folder is if we go into the distribution in the images, there's also this HUD texture. It's just a very simple, it's got some alpha in the middle. This is a stock image. There we go, fine with that. I'm gonna overlay this on my screen. So got that but we are going to need some sort of HUD material so if we go up to our renderer in the assets we've got all of this including just copy that over and I'll call that HUD material it is getting to the point where if I had a few more of these I might want to organize them with some sort of data structure like a a hash map but I'm a little lazy so I'll keep this as it is it's probably some sort of foreshadowing right but anyway let me go ahead and right down here we'll make our HUD material and then we'll initialize it okay so device the name I think the name is HUD the bind group layout is okay. Cool. I'm just I'm just gonna double check that. So HUD, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. So we've got that, got the HUD material. Uh, now draw the world, then draw the HUD. Cool. So what's the process there? Well, we're already drawing the world. Drawing the HUD is a two-dimensional operation. So oh wait a second. I can probably get away with this for now. I'm talking to myself. So what I'm thinking is I can straight up do the HUD drawing in the draw world operation, because even though draw world is 3D, all we need to do is not specify a projection matrix and then we're doing 2D automatically. Cool, so this is a little dodgy. I may have to revisit this, revisit this later, but I'm just gonna go ahead so I'll grab all of this stuff and I'll go down here right after we've drawn everything. And then I'm going to say, okay, set the pipeline to the HUD pipeline, the bind group. Again, we'll be at bind group zero. And that will be the material stuff. So I can get the bind group of the HUD material. That'll bind that material ready to go, issue a draw call, and we should be good. We can go ahead and test this right now. Hmm. <laughs> nice. Okay. This looks like we might have an error going on. Absolutely. Okay. So see, we have our debug reporting working properly. So this is telling me that 
it's really not liking the fact that I'm not doing depth testing when I draw that hut material. So I may have jumped the gun a little bit when I drew it initially, because it's saying here that, hey, we're expecting a pipeline to render out to an image, you know, a frame buffer, plus a texture, oh, sorry, not a texture, a depth stencil buffer. Whereas this pipeline, the HUD pipeline, is only prepared to render out to a color buffer, basically. <clears throat> Which, yeah, that's fair because we've disabled depth testing. So we can get around that by walking this back, taking this HUD stuff and doing that actually after the post-processing. Here we've got our screen. We dump out our view of the world. And then on top of that, we overlay the HUD. Let's see how this goes. Nice. Okay. Cool. So as you can see, we have, you know, pretty much got the HUD and nothing else. That's fair. So the issue here is that we've got, um, we've got something with transparency, but we haven't enabled alpha blending. So I'll just close this down. And this is the next thing that I want to work at. And let me just go to my pipeline builder. And I'll have some extra variable to track whether we're going to be doing alpha blending. So it's surprisingly simple to handle this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a function I can call to set the blending state. So I'll have a function. I'll say set that and Cool. So you just got a simple flag, which tracks whether we're in alpha blending mode and the way we can handle the results of that flag is right down here where we, whoop, not there, oh my goodness, um, down here where we add a color format. So the color format, I'm actually going to change this name to make it a little more descriptive. I'm going to say add Ren render target and yeah, this is this is probably fine okay so before we pretty much pushed on this really simple object where only the format was specified uh, there's actually a lot more we can specify here but i'll start with this for now and then we can optionally also set the blend operation with the render target so this will be based on our blend state, if that's enabled or not. If it's not enabled, we do nothing. If it is enabled, then we can modify this object and we can set the blend state. Now the blend state has a few things. We have the color field, which basically specifies a blend operation. So we have a few of these. You can say, okay, the operation we're going to perform is add. And then just like OpenGL, we'll have a source factor and a destination factor. The source factor I'll say is the source alpha. And the destination factor is the standard uh, one minus source alpha. So. I'm sure we've all been through this before, but just as an example, if I've got a fragment coming in with 90% transparency, it's pretty thick. It's going to overlay what it's going on to. So we're going to add 90% of the incoming color plus 10% of the existing color. Um, and we can also specify separate color and alpha blend operations. Um, in the case of alpha, I guess it really doesn't matter, does it? So I'm just going to set the alpha of the destination to the alpha of the source. So we'll just completely override. So I'll we'll say, um, set the operation to add, actually change my mind because, sorry, because if I look at this operation here, the destination alpha is actually never being used. So it doesn't really matter that much. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is get rid of this. And instead of constructing that custom object, I'm just going to push on the object that I've constructed above. Cool. So hopefully you can see how easy this is to extend. So what I can do then is I can go back to my renderer. I'm going to need to change a few things. Pipelines. Whoops. Where are you? A render target. And before that, I'm going to set the blend state to true. And actually, I think it actually doesn't matter. I think I can just do alpha blending for everything because only this text. Oh, let's find out. Okay. Speak too soon, maybe. So let me just go run it. Yeah, there we go. That works fine. So obviously this texture with the overlay is the only texture which has any sort of alpha transparency in it. Everything else has alpha blending, but has no transparency. So it's all fine. So there we have it. Today we have added an overlay to our world. We're starting to composite different views together. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you're having fun and I will see you again soon. Bye. Hi, so I just want to take a second to thank my channel supporters. If you would like to support the channel, it's just $2.50 a month. That's all I ask, nothing crazy, but I really do appreciate it. If you're unwilling or unable to financially support the channel, that's totally fine. It's not expected. The best thing you can do in that case is comment on the videos and explain like what you're liking, what you're not liking, what you'd like to see. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. So without further ado, big thank you to Antonin Karet, Dankio Falls, Declan, Andalon Studios, Isaiah Meyer, Mathieu Derick, and Moy. Thank you so much, my dudes. I really do appreciate it. Keeps me running, you know, keeps me motivated. But um, that'll be it for now. So have a great one and I'll see you again soon. Bye.